Okay, so members, today we're not coming in today's lesson. Today we are going to see how do we handle rational functions. The question is, what are the rational functions? Rational functions, these are functions where we have square root. So, how do we handle equations that are having rational functions? But before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now, these are the equations we are going to solve. Now, the question is, how do we handle them? The hint you need here is, you need to know how do we expand the bracket of two terms. For example, if I have this bracket squared, remember we said the square is, then this and this, then by two, then the square less term. But now, now I'm putting the first and last term because if it's positive, this is positive. If it's negative, this is negative. Now, if I sum square this and I put now a root, you know when I square a root, I will be having it out away. Then I square square this one, it will go. Then a root and a root a times root b, I'll be getting root a b, then that's two. So that's the end we have. Now, here in the hand, you see this question. So we have root of this and this. So here you see you have two x, this side will be having. So you start by how do we remove the square roots? We remove the square roots by squaring both sides. So we say square on both sides. So if I square both sides, you see that I already have it now. The whole of this square, so I'm going it now. So I square both sides. So if I square both sides now, it's that the case we are having is this case when we are having a root and when we are having a root. Now we are having a negative. So it means that it's going to be negative. What you do, when I square this, I'll be having now. Minus x, this is my a, this is my b. Then, when you square the negative, we get a positive. When you square this, you get power the root so plus x, then minus 2. Then I multiply this and this. I'm here now root of 3 minus x times root 7 plus x. When I multiply this and this. Then, this time, when you square this, the square root will go away to x. So that's how we handle it. It is. I'm using this. I square the root goes. I square this, the root also goes. Then I have this, then times 2. Because it's negative, that's why I have it negative. Now, let us simplify this and this. We start this and this is going to vanish. So from here, so this is going to vanish. I'll be having 3 plus this, I'll be having 10. Then x has vanished. Then I have minus 2. Then the roots, if you multiply the two sides, Means that we can separate them and multiply this and this, so we have three. They all equal to 16 plus 2x. Okay, so I can take this design and be having now negative 2 square root of, can we expand? This will be 21. This is 3 minus this to give you negative 4x. Then negative by negative, we get negative x squared. Equal to 2, when I take this side, I have now 6 plus 2x. Can divide it by 2. You see that we are adding now. Can divide it by negative 2. Or from here, we square both sides. So square both sides. We square both sides, we don't forget to square this. We shall be adding 4. When we square this now, it will vanish and be having 21 minus equal to 2. When I square this side, now I'm squaring this side and I'm also squaring this side. I'll be having this squared, other 6, then plus this and this, that's wrong. Then by 2, 24x, then plus 4x squared. So from here, let us open brackets. I'll be having this time is this. I have this time this, this will give me 84, then minus 16x, then minus 4x, equal to 2. This side we have 4x squared, plus 24x, then plus 36. When I take it, this is squared. When I take this other side, I'll be having now 8x squared. When I take this is the side, so I'll be having now plus 40 x. Now when I take this to the other side, you just get 
84, you are subtracting off 16. There you have 8, here you have 48. So this side will be a now minus 8 equal to 0. So that you can divide it by 8, divide by 8, you have x squared then plus 5x then minus 12 equal to 0. I mean, not 12, this is 6 minus 6 equal to 0. So, okay, let me correct it properly. So that's not a you divide through by 8, this one becomes a 6. So two numbers, I don't try to get this. When I add, I get 5. Those are x plus 6. Then x minus 1. Equal to 0. When I expand this, I get that. So you see that from there, either my x is negative 6 or my x is 1. So after getting the values like that, now you do what you call verification because sometimes not all these values are only for that. So you say when x is equal to 1, we verify we are going to verify we are going to verify the whole for those values. So when x is 1, now I call this the left hand side. So my when I put 1 here, I'll be having root 2. When I put here, I have root 2. Then minus, when I put here 2, I mean I put 1, I have root 8, which will be the same as, it's the same as root 2, minus 2 root 2, which will be negative root 2. So that's my right hand side, left hand side. Then right hand side, that's what we have right hand side. I put here the 1 and we have 16 plus this and we have 18. So here I have root 18 is the same as 3 root 2. So it's that they are not equal. So the left hand side is not equal to 2. The right hand side is a 1 and not be the value. When I dump now when x is negative 6, what am I having? When I put here negative 6 on my left hand side, be adding now root 9 then minus when I put here a negative 6 I'll be adding root 1 which will be this is giving me 3 minus 1 which will be a 2 what about right hand side my right hand side will be square root of I have 16 now minus this 6 when I put there I have 12, which would be square root over 4, which would be a 2. Now we have the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. And therefore, our value for x is going to be negative 6. So you already verified. So please remember, you can now handle these ones here. Now, the hint I'm giving you on this last two, already it is that you have x1, one x this side, and you have one x, and you have a constant this side, it's better to take this one this side. So, sort of this one, it will be easier if you start by saying root x minus 5 equal to 5 minus root x. Why? Because if you square this, we have an x, and this will be having an x which can easily pass. Or you can even calculate that way. I assume the best.